Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce the basics of Cartoon Animator 5 and how you can use it to quickly and easily create and animate your characters in a scene. Let's take a look at the basic layout and how you can customize an embedded character first. Your main viewport contains a blue outline that corresponds to your final render output dimensions. There are general function toolbars on the top and left of the viewport, and on the right will be your content manager where you can find a number of free embedded assets in the free resource category. In the actor pack, you'll find a number of characters and accessories. You can right click on any item to view its information. This actor here is a G3 human side facing character in SVG format. We can click and drag or double click it to apply it to our scene. Since this is an SVG character, we can use the SVG color adjustment tool to adjust the color of its various parts. We have a separate tutorial that goes more in depth on this tool. You'll see that there are two main groups for clothing and character, corresponding to the character's clothing and its skin, hair, and other features. If we open up the groups, we can also see various sub items that can be adjusted individually, which you can also select by simply clicking on the corresponding part of the character. Clicking the color box will allow you to change the color of the selected part. Many parts will have both a line and fill that you can adjust separately. You can use the color pick tool and adjust the brightness to get better color coordination between these parts. Let's switch to clothing now. Certain clothing parts will have sublayers that may have zero opacity as an option in order to make it easier to adjust things like your shirt from short to long sleeve. Just select these layers and adjust the opacity to achieve the result you want. The SVG color adjustment tool is a super useful way to quickly and easily customize your character in various ways from a single template to give it different skin colors and clothing types. Once we're satisfied with our character, we can save it to the content manager by making sure it's selected and then clicking the save button in the content manager. You'll need to define the name and asset type and once you've saved, you'll be able to find it in that category under the custom tab. Okay, let's take a look at animating our characters next. If we right click on the character in the viewport, we can see an action menu that contains the embedded animations for this character. We can choose this excited animation and play back to see it. If we want to further customize that animation, we can open up the timeline from the bottom toolbar or by using the F3 hotkey. You'll see the animation we applied in both the FFD and motion tracks. FFD stands for freeform deformation that allows for a more energetic and dynamic animation result. We have a separate tutorial about FFD on our Reillusion Courses page as well. If we right click on the FFD clip, we can adjust its intensity to make the character's movement more or less bouncy. You can also find additional animations from the animation pack in the free resources, all categorized appropriately. You can now click and drag animations directly from the content manager into the timeline to place them at a precise frame. After placement, you can also click and drag the clips to different frames to blend them and get a different result. With Cartoon Animator 5, you can also apply 3D motions to your 2D character. 3D motions can be found in the 3D motion category in the animation pack. Once you apply one of them to your character, a dedicated Import 3D Motion panel will pop up. Here you can choose different angle presets for your character and also rotate manually. Since we're using a side facing character here, I'll choose a 45 degree angle preset and you'll see the cool perspective effect. After that, simply hit the Apply to Timeline button to bake it to your timeline as a clip. You can easily alter the applied motion clip at any frame by using the 2D Motion Key Editor. This tool allows you to manually adjust the motion at different frames by selecting and moving the various character bones. Okay, let's move on to facial animation now. 
The Create Script tool on the left toolbar allows you to create talking animation for your character via recorded voice, text-to-speech, audio files, or a cartoon script file from Cartoon Animator. In this case, I'm just importing an audio MP3, after which I'll play back to test the automatic lip sync result. What? Really? Anyone can do it, even in just a few minutes? <laughs> well, let's put that to the test. You can then use the Face Key Editor tool to create facial expressions. The gizmo in the viewport will allow you to rotate your character's head, and upon doing so, you'll also notice that the hair has a spring effect applied. You can learn more about spring bones in a dedicated tutorial. To adjust facial features, simply select one or multiple sections of the face dummy, then click and drag in the white area to control these parts simultaneously. You can also use the embedded expression presets in the template tab. There are expression categories in the dropdown, and once you've selected one, you can also adjust the expression slider to set its intensity. An even easier way to animate the face in real time is by using the Face Puppet tool. Here you can select the face animation profile, then simply hit preview and move your mouse to see the result. Once you've got a preview that you like, you can then hit the record button and press the space key to start your live recording. What? Really? Anyone can do it, even in just a few minutes? <laughs> well, let's put that to the test. While recording, only the facial animation will be displayed, but when we play back the final result, you'll see that it doesn't overwrite the lip sync in this case. Really? Anyone can do it, even in just a few minutes? <laughs> well, let's put that to the test. Okay, so we've got some basic character animation. Let's add some background props to our scene. In the Scene and Prop Pack, you'll see a number of preset scenes and individual props. You'll find a forest folder under Props that contains a number of individual props that make up the forest scene. You can quickly and easily just drag them into your viewport and adjust their positions to get things set up. If you enter into 3D view, you can adjust the position of your props on the z-axis so that they will appear behind or in front of each other in the main view. The placement of your scene items on the z-axis can also help to simulate a three-dimensional perspective known as the parallax effect when the camera moves. You can also scale the size of anything in your scene to resize it as well. Once you've got your scene all set up, you can apply some of the FFD motion files from the FFD category of the animation pack to any prop in your scene. These FFD motions are a quick and easy way to generate dynamic and interesting motions for any of your props. Okay, before we finish up, let's take a look at some basic camera movement next. As you can see, more animation and a character have been added to our scene. What? Really? Anyone can do it, even in just a few minutes? To animate your scene camera, simply go up to enable camera record mode in the top toolbar. You'll see a record indicator appear on the top right of your viewport. What we can do after we have our initial position set is open up the camera track in the timeline, head to frame 60, and then move the viewport to focus on the character. That will create a quick camera movement and you can multi-select the keyframes in the camera track to adjust the timing. What? Really? Anyone can do it, even in just a few minutes? If you're satisfied, you can then go to a frame where you want your project to end and click the Set End Frame button or use the Control right bracket hotkey. Finally, it's time to save the project and render it. Saving is pretty straightforward, Simply click on the Save button once you're in the Custom tab and select Project as the asset type. After that, you can click on the Render button from the top toolbar, which will bring up your Render Settings panel. You can choose to export an image, image sequence, or a video in various formats and dimensions, and also export scene items separately for further editing and external effects software like After Effects, which requires you to use PNG format. I'll just export a simple MP4 in 1080p here, and you'll see our export range is already set as we defined the project length earlier. That's it for this quick introduction to creating a simple animated scene in Cartoon Animator 5. 
Be sure to check out our other tutorials on various topics on our Reillusion Courses page, and I'll see you in the next video. What? Really? Anyone can do it, even in just a few minutes? <laughs> well, let's put that to the test.